You're listening to the Jim Mint Podcast by GFNF. Your weekly breakdown of sports cards, hobby news, and everything in between. And everything in between. Here's your hosts, Jake and Nico. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode, episode six of Gem Mint by GFNF. It is February 23rd. Um, what's going on, Jake? Back, guys. All right, let's uh, yeah, let's let's hop into it. Pretty pretty slow week, um, in regards to any sort of kind of retail product. Um, I think we were like anticipating no target drop or anything this week, um, but we did get skunked by Walmart today, which uh yeah. was like the first Wednesday in probably it's got to be like two or three months, I would think, um. But there yeah, it's are pretty disappointing. Yeah, there are con- like PlayStation Five tomorrow on on Walmart, so I think that's probably why um, we we didn't see it today. But it kind of um, we were talking about this before, like a little bit of a guessing game now is like oh, like because Walmart is, has like dropped stuff at like three a.m. before. And it's like oh, are they going to do that again? So a little bit of a guessing how, game, but how inconsiderate of them? I mean, that's just like so stupid, like. If that doesn't prove that they don't really care about bots or, you know, having it get into the consumer's hand, I don't know what does. Because, like, no one's on it for and, like, to buy sports cards. So, it's whatever, though. Uh, we did see Target. What they're, what I guess we're kind of putting together is, like, they oversold um, the Mosaic football cellos. So, we saw. By a lot. Yeah, I think. a decent amount of, I mean, I mean kind of makes sense with, like, how much we saw checked out. Um, but yeah, we saw a decent amount of cancellations come through. I actually only lost half my orders. Um, so I didn't get That's hit exactly too bad. What I did. Yeah. So, uh, it, it wasn't too bad. I know some people lost a decent amount. I think you like Midwesterners, you're like Midwest, right? Chicago Midwest. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- we're, I, th- we're, we're... <laughs> I think cause yeah. you guys like get it. You guys are so close to the distribution. Episode seven, we're all do geography. Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> yeah, right in the middle. We're in yeah. <laughs> I think we're all, I think we're only a one as far as like UPS ground, FedEx ground, I think we're one day delivery away from the Iowa warehouse. Yeah, I have a buddy that lives in Carlisle that uh his is their next day always. So um But yeah, I guess just back at it next week we should should uh see a target drop, I would think. Um oh we did there was that issue with the emails with mosaic basketball so yeah there was like a ton of payment updates um that that target sent out for the mosaic nba mega boxes and as people were canceling them like someone noticed that the email said football mega box and they did drop the mega boxes for for nba mosaic twice once was red card once was without so people think that they kind of messed up which wouldn't be shocking just based on like how they messed up with the with the cello packs. Right. Um so I think there's probably a good chance we see mega boxes next week, which is gonna be a bloodbath, but looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, people got excited because when they looked at their account on their target profile it showed some of them actually showed football mega. Or it said mosaic NFL mega. Yeah, and the and email like maybe. that when it shipped said it, it was like People, right. super, you know, yeah, people were super hyped, but it ended up just being basketball, which right. is unfortunate. But uh, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much on that uh, you know, on that front. Um, so yes. y- series one baseball, how much did you, how much did you get into there? I uh, opened up a jumbo case and some, I think three or four hobbies on, mm-hmm. on the side of the jumbo hobby case. And what was your best hit? I, I pulled a super fractor one of one of a Florida player, and it was not Wander Franco. Um, <laughs> so that's how unforgettable it was. You don't even remember who it was. <laughs> shout out uh, Stefan Hollywood in the Discord. Uh, he, uh, him and I spent the weekend ripping, and if someone would have told me I would have had a Florida player uh, rookie super fractor auto one of one and – it was not Wander Franco. I think it would have passed out, but it ended up being a pitcher. Um, sold immediately on eBay. It was, I think we have 500 bucks for it. So it paid for 
almost half a case. Uh, I did get a Wander Gold Foil, which was really nice. So that's that's on its way to PSA right now. It's in pretty good shape. So hoping for a ten on that. Um, what a fun rip! You you know how flagship is. There's not there's no you know unless obviously Wander Franco this year, but there's no twenty five thousand dollar cards coming out of flagship paper for tops. But definitely a fun rip. Yeah, I mean I opened one hobby box, which is like kind of crazy to me. Like mm-hmm. usually I'll rip a couple of stuff. But uh yeah, I ended up pulling that that Miguel Cabrera on card auto uh jersey yeah. number out of twenty five. Yeah, um, that's sweet. Little corner was a little ding. I'm not I mean I'm a I'm a Miguel Cabrera fan. Not really like a oh I gotta keep this card. Um yep. I think it's on eBay. It's got like four days left. So it's like two hundred bucks ready. Um so. Hall of Famer. Yeah, he doesn't I mean I don't think there's that like too many on card autos of his out there either. Um yeah. I got another pretty good first baseman in mine. I got a, it was a base that I had uh, Jose Abreu auto in mine, which was kind of cool. You don't see him sign a ton either. Yeah, that's nice. That's not bad. Um, yeah, in in the realm of of series one, we did, and it was kind of people were were saying it was fake at first. A a Wander Franco base paper PSA ten, and I saw a bunch of people saying it was fake. It's fake. Because the cert number wasn't coming up, and I think it was just because it was graded so quick. Yeah, it wasn't it's, updated. Actually, yeah. I checked it today; it did come up. Yeah, they tweeted about it, but it, it sold for two thousand seventy-five dollars. Uh, you think it was paid for? Yeah, I think it was. I think it's ridiculous. Um, I had I had a similar situation happen in twenty twenty. Um, I pulled. I think I I got I got it a day early. I won't tell which hobby shop to keep him from getting in trouble, but it was during the Lou Bob hype. And, and for those, you know, it's Lou, uh, Luis Robert for the White Sox pulled one of his super crispy paper. And this was, this was during the days where it was $12 to grade a card and everything, or I think it was maybe 50 or 75 for express at that point. And everything was selling for a ton. So I sent it in and I was the very first one back with it. And I got $1,200 for a PSA 10 paper Lou Bob. Um, and they paid, so I would assume they paid for that. I think, uh, immediately it's probably worth, it'll settle right around 200 bucks. Don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's like what, so like Soto and Acuna paper does. Um, yeah. I mean, it's a first to market, definitely feast, but I thought, I mean, I, I feel like people have gotten much smarter. Um, but I guess there's still some dummies out there that just like, don't know what they're doing. So. Well, you have to ha- you have to be first to market, and then you have to make the sale and pass the return window before all the other ones hit. Yeah, no, yeah. it's it's true. Um, Race to the finish. Yeah, I mean, I did that with Prism Football. Like, I was pretty, I was at least one of the first ones to the market with a with a Herbert um, that I that I sold for like thirteen hundred dollars, uh, and I think wow. they're like four now. So, shout out to that guy. <laughs> for, for buying that um so something pretty cool and we've seen this kind of pick up um i know there's a case of this stuff i think on golden right now a uh marvel precious metal gem spider-man uh the emerald mm-hmm. which is is that what is that numbered out of do you know is it 100 uh it's 50 i believe is it 50 sold for 255,000. i'm not a huge marvel guy i don't know if you are um, I like the movies. I mean, I'm not diehard over it, but th- I do like the Marvel movies. Let me let me pull up that card and just take a look at it. Um, what do you mean you're not a Marvel fan? What do you like DC? No, I mean I'm not like a, the biggest like movie guy. I don't think so. Like yeah, that's right. You don't watch movies. Yeah, I'm like very picky. So um, oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah okay yeah cool cool card. Wouldn't wouldn't buy it, but um. It was raw too. Oh, quarter mil for a raw card? Okay. Yeah, it wasn't even great. It wasn't even graded. Okay. I mean, did you see? Um, it actually ended. I think it was last night. Um, it was the I think the most expensive Kobe Bryant card. It was actually a precious metal gem, emerald. This was out of a hundred. So I don't know if the sports and Marvel is different. Um, it sold on PWCC for $2 million. Yep. We'll scratch that off of our top sales of the week. 
Oh, do we have that? <laughs> yeah, no, oh, yeah, no, no. Little it's spoiler. really cool. That was a, it wasn't PWCC. It was a private sale that was brokered by that. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. I, Two I, million. I follow like their director. Um, oh my God. What is his name? Slip in my head. Jesse Craig or something like that on Instagram. So I always kind of see mm-hmm. some of their, their happenings on there, which is it's pretty cool. It's a pretty cool card. I would bet I would yeah. buy the Kobe before I bought Spider Man. Oh uh, yeah, de- definitely. That's just um, <laughs> the other thing that's pretty cool, fairly close to you, I would assume, is PSA. Right? They're expanding. They they bought a hundred and thirty thousand square foot uh, new office space in Jersey City. Yeah, there was rumors of this for a bit, um, and uh, it seems like it's finally happening. And I think it needs to happen. And I think it's good that you now have an office on each coast. Mm-hmm. Um. So we'll see. So t- 2023 is supposed to be like the fully operational date. Um, I think it's smart because I always thought, you know, especially for people that grade through group submitters, wh- when you're trying to keep the card as stable as possible and get it to where it needs to go. I mean, you had some people that probably lived in the Midwest or even further West shipping their cards East to a group submitter to ship them all the way to the West coast to get graded to go all the way back to the East coast to ship them back to their customers, wherever they're from. It's a lot of moving around. Yeah. Plus you got to think about walkthroughs, you know, now you have right two locations um, along each coast that, uh, you know, will be able to offer that, that kind of service or, you know, those higher end um, cards. And how I many, know there's, there's a lot of, how many do you think they're here. doing? How many, how many walkthroughs do you think PSA does in a year? Uh, I couldn't even guess, honestly. Do you know? No, I don't. I just I would assume it's not a terribly large amount. No, well, it's only five hundred dollars, isn't it? Maybe I'm thinking of the highest end service. Uh, I think you are. Um, let me pull it up. But I'm I'm I could have sworn, and it could have changed. But I could have sworn that a walkthrough submission was five hundred dollars. Um, and yeah, I honestly, I've never done it. I've, I haven't looked in a while. Um, let's see, regular card for grading. Yes. And here's your service level walkthrough 600. Okay. So it went up, it went up a hundred so, bucks, but I mean, I mean, you got to imagine the guy at the wander did that. So like he made $1,400 pretty much. Right. So not the worst investment if you, if you use it smart. Um, imagine if that thing got a nine. Yeah, I mean, you got to be real confident going to spend six hundred on that. About it. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I mean, it's definitely good. It's awesome to see them expanding, and and uh, definitely shows continue you know continuing growth, uh, with with sports cards and you know TCG and and memorabilia and stuff. So, um, mm-hmm. and then the uh. The card juggernaut, fanatics, did it um, again. Yeah, they went and purchased Mitchell and Ness. Um, honestly, I I remember that being pretty popular when I was in like I feel like high school. Oh yeah, Mitchell and Ness was Mitchell and Ness was everything sports apparel before we have what we have now. I mean, yeah, especially late eighties, early nineties, even through the nineties and stuff like that. It was Mitchell and Ness. I don't know. I feel like I don't see too much of it anymore maybe i'm not looking um just just when they do the you know the throwback style stuff that's usually yeah that's true on this, but it's mostly new era and all the all the new brands now but 250 million dollars i mean they're, they're throwing cash around like crazy i mean they're worth 20 billion i think so that's yeah. kind of like a blip so they uh they partnered with jay-z and meek mills company that also they own 25% their holding company. Fanatics retains 75% of it. And they already had that deal with Jay-Z with the uh, sports betting division coming up. So they're going to, they're building an entire empire. They're covering about everything you possibly can. Yeah. I really don't know what's left. Maybe like a restaurant. They could buy out like, yeah. a, like Applebee's or something. Um, uh, live gaming casinos. <laughs> probably. That's about it. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. Um, Speaking of playing a, a uh, you know a little little bit of a gamble here, we have seen you know there was obviously not rumors but you know news going around that the production of series one um, 
was pretty crazy this year. Yep. And uh, Jake, if you want to run through some of the stats just based on the last few years and and kind of the pack odds, which at first, like if you don't think about it, like you're looking at it, you're like, oh, this you know this card's harder to pull. It must be right. you know it must be more rare. Um, but it really just means that there's more packs. But, yeah. Yeah. Right. Go ahead, and so. We have a chart here. This is this is done based on pack odds, uh, which is how you calculate print run and stuff like that. But just to give an idea, uh, 2019, which is really the start of the increase in production, a gold parallel out of a Topps flagship product, which is numbered out of the year. So if you pull a gold in 2019, it'll be number 33 out of 2019. Um, and those came one in every five packs. And in this series one for this year, 2022 is one in 38 packs, which shows approximately a eight times production. Um, so they've increased production significantly. Uh, it's about a 33% increase from last year, uh, which again was another double from 2020 and, and three X times that from 2019. So they've really ramped up production here. We knew they did. Um, the whole argument with this being junk wax era 2.0, um, it's fun to say that and it's funny and, but it's just not true. It's not, I mean, that we're, we're not at 25% of the production of the junk wax era. Uh, people that, you know, have collected back then, you guys know that it was floor to ceiling in every liquor store, corner store, grocery store, hobby shop, you know, they, they printed that stuff to the moon, but the other, other parallels too. I mean, you know, super short prints is, is one of the bigger chases in Topps flagship products. And a super short print, which is incredibly tough to pull as it is, came one in every 444 packs in 2019. Uh, in 2022, came one in every 3,341 packs. So if you're talking, we won't go as far to say jumbo hobby, but if you're talking a regular hobby box, there's 24 packs in a box. So uh, 3341 divided by 24 is about 140 packs or 140 boxes so divide that by the amount of cases that's a little less than 12 you'd have to open 12 cases on average to to pull a super short print i mean i've seen quite a few people pull the wander ssp um and i imagine imagine how much is getting ripped though no i know but like i saw someone literally like not giving it away but i Saw it for twenty five hundred dollars, and then the next day I saw someone selling it for twelve hundred. So it's a little the super short print wander for twelve hundred. Yeah, the one where he's like standing there in the jersey or whatever, pointing or yeah. something like that. I swear to God, twelve hundred bucks. Um, I don't even know if it's sold. I think people are scared. They don't. They don't know what to think with with that. That's uh, crazy to me. I mean, I, the other thing that's weird about the wander rookie to me is they used a non action or non-swinging or fielding photo for his base card. Yeah, um, it is a little weird, but it's kind of a cool picture at the same time. It, it's a cool picture, but that that's something I would have put as the short print. Yeah. Um, I guess they had they used a lot of his, uh, obviously, since 2019, they've Wander's been in about every single Bowman product, and even 2021, he was in, they added that prospect set, but... So I'm sure he's had a ton of pictures, but it's a, yeah, that, that card, 1200 bucks on the super short print wander. That's probably not a, ter- if you can grade it well, that's probably not a terrible buy. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of grading, well, the, uh, I know this is kind of, it's not old news. Well, I guess it's kind of old news, but just, just on the front of, of MLB superstars. Um, mm-hmm. So for those that don't know, Juan Soto, he only had autographed, cards in 2016 bowman so there was no base card first bowman chroma his it's same with you on alvarez it just autographs only yep so his super fractor has been pulled already um and it originally was graded i believe it was a bgs9 um that's correct yep with a nine auto i think uh i got the picture right here it's uh yeah nine nine yeah so Nine auto is kind of sh- kind of shitty, honestly. It's it mm-hmm. it definitely you definitely lose a lot of value with a nine auto, um, and I think what was what was the corner grade? Was it a nine or was it eight point five? So the centering was a nine, edges nine and a half, surface nine and a half, corners eight and a half. Yeah. So 
eight and a half corners usually means there's something dinged or lifting or, or whatever. Yeah, so, you can see it. It's the top right corner. I mean, even yeah. in the original, you can see it. It's soft. Yeah, so it, it was cracked, and it created a PSA 10. And uh, I think the biggest thing is, aside from if it was even, you know, possibly trimmed, you know, to, to fix that, that, that mushed corner, mm-hmm. uh, the auto was clearly tampered with. It was clearly wiped off and, and kind of sharpened up almost. Um, oh, yeah. And, yeah, so it, it got a PSA 10. I forget. Do you know exactly what happened with it? I thought they, I thought they like invalidated the grade or took it back. I know that's that has happened with yeah. So so LeBron PSA, cards. PSA bought it back and destroyed it. They took it out of production. PSA I actually thought, paid for it. I thought that was a rumor. Yeah. It's, well, no, it's true. They did buy it back. Whether or not they destroyed it, it could be sitting in Nat Turner's desk. Who knows? But there's no way. Yeah. There's no way. They he, definitely. They they said they destroyed it at the time. They said they destroyed. It. Yeah. I don't know have you seen that. Have you seen the LeBron exquisite that had the patch swapped? No. Yeah. Yeah. So there was like an exquisite LeBron auto that had like I think it was at a ninety nine that had like I want to say it was just I think it was just like a white jersey and like the exquisite like patch area is just not it's not a big spot either. And I don't know how this guy did it, but they cr- the card was cracked and a completely different patch was in it, which is impossible to hide, like, because it's not, like, the card's numbered, so, like, you know, it doesn't miraculously just, like, change colors. Um, it's not a mood card. Uh, but, yeah, I know that's happened. Basketball market has more of this than the baseball market with, with you know, card tampering and, and fakes and stuff. Um but yeah, that was that was a big thing too. I'll I'll have to send you that post. It's I saw it on Instagram, but it was kind of it was kind of pretty crazy that some dude actually like did like a jersey swap uh, in a card. Um, really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pretty wild. You get rugged in NFTs, and now we're getting rugged in sports cards. Facts. Yeah, yeah this thing. So I I don't know if you can uh, see if we can get this down lower. You need, you see that picture of the one? So I mean. Yeah, it, it's clearly so the swooping. There's a swooping J. I guys go look it up. It's 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 you can find them side by side. There's plenty of pictures of it, but there's a whole I would say inch of the swooping J that runs off the side of the card that was cleaned to be centered and stuff. It's completely obvious. Yeah, it's bad. It's just it's just not good. Um, but yeah, I, he's got an awesome auto, like. It's one of the best in the hobby, um, but there's there's someone going for his crown right now, and yeah, his name is yeah. Benny Montgomery, and this dude, that guy's fun, man. He's good for that. Yeah, hobby. he is absolutely just like blowing up on hobby Twitter. People are absolutely loving everything he's doing. So basically, there there was it kind of was triggered by someone saying that he didn't sign his cards because there was like two different kind of variations of his auto. Like the regular Benny Auto and then like Fancy Benny is what they called yep. it. Um, yep. So like he made a video of him signing and then he also posted the picture of the that blue auto that he signed um, that said Borat. And yeah. now he's back at it again um, with uh, the 2022 Bowman. So these guys are signing the Sapphire Autos and uh, he, he posted a picture and yeah, he signed it. Benny Montgomery. I think it said like, didn't it say like Benny and the Jets, and he drew a picture yeah, of a plane. Yeah, Benny and the Jets. Yeah, and he, yeah, yeah. And then he found a grammatical error in it, and he ended up putting like <laughs> stars all over the place, and then drew a mustache on himself. Yeah, so he he put a apostrophe in <laughs> Jets, and then decided to turn it into a star and put like five other stars, so it blended in, and then drew a mustache on himself, which. It's yeah. hysterical. Yeah, so hopefully that gets in rotation because that's just so funny. I already saw Chief Fun Breaks put a 10K uh, bounty out on it. So if you, if you pull that, um, be sure to hit them yeah. up if you, if you want a quick sale. But that's going to be I, – I really That'll hope it's, it's out there because that's that's going to be a cool freaking card. Um, yeah, I won't pull it because I don't pull anything good ever, but yeah, it's, <laughs> it'll be out there. What do you think of the design of the new Bowman? I, oh, I like best. it. Oh, best. It's the best since 19. It's not, it, it, it's it, not close. 
it looks it's a combination of 2018 and 19 yeah it's it's beautiful i'm, I'm yeah, gonna rip so I'm much like, of it i can't wait yeah. we'll be <laughs> I, ripping it at the national oh for sure i i really yeah. didn't like 2020 was cool i just hated like how off-centered everything looked like if it was like even slightly off-centered it just looked terrible yeah i um, thought it was plain overall compared you know comparatively to 2019 2018 oh, yeah. I didn't. I don't like 2021. I, I know, nope. like some people like it. I, it just. I don't know. It seems cheesy to me. Boring. Yeah, I, I'm not a big fan. So I'm looking forward to 2022 because, the yeah, the design just looks look yeah. really really. Color. Sick. The colors look great. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. Everything's gonna be a good rip. Yep. Um. Yeah. So let's uh let's shift gears here to some uh, some more noticeable uh names in, in sports. Um. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to hear how you feel on this one. So Aaron Rodgers took to social media, um, put up that Instagram post with, it was yeah. a picture of Randall Cobb and Devontae Adams. Or there was a couple pictures, right? It wasn't there just was him. And, there was him and the, the uh, what's her name? Shailene Woodley that he's dating. And yeah. there's a picture of Randall Cobb and then his quarterbacks, Jordan Love and his quarterback coach and real sappy. Yeah. So he, I mean, he kind of hinted at like, Oh, I'm gone, or I'm not coming back. So, did you see what he said today on Sports Center? No, what did he say? He he made a statement that he had just finished a, like a juice cleanse or something oh like that. He character. was a uh, he just you know felt an overwhelming amount of love for his people in his life and stuff, and, which <laughs> yeah. is fine. You know that's that's totally fine. Um, I'm not buying it, but <laughs> I think he's going to be back. I think he's going to be back. Yeah, who the hell knows? I mean. Now, everyone wants to say the whole Denver thing, but like I don't think that the Denver defense is as good as when Peyton Manning was there. But plus they have Drew Locke. True. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, we are big investors in Drew Locke, so we need to to, to pan out. I'm still holding <laughs> on to those. Um, yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, we did have NBA All Star Weekend. Gonna be honest, didn't watch a minute of it. I only watched a little bit of the dunk contest just because I was flipping through channels. I forgot it was on because uh, basketball is not near as cool as baseball. But, um, yeah, I, I mean, basic highlights. Uh, it was Team LeBron against Team Durant. LeBron's team won. Steph Curry won the MVP. Um, Obi Toppin, which was a rookie, you know, one of the rookies from last year's products, he won the dunk contest. And then Carl Anthony Towns won the three-point competition. So, I'll be Pretty honest. I, I didn't. Stuff. I didn't know Cat was a three point shooter. <laughs> I, I didn't either. Is he like a center? I mean, if you would have asked me who Carl Anthony Towns was, you know, a <laughs> couple weeks ago, I probably would have told you. I don't know. Like, <laughs> did European you see? Golfer. Did you see the video of Jordan? Jordan was on. First of all, Jordan was going absolutely crazy at the at the All Star game. I did see videos of him. And uh, did you see the memes that came out of it? Not to derail this. No. So yeah. <laughs> there was a video of them of like players like gambling in in the locker room, and there was just so many memes about like oh when Jordan Jordan was in such a good mood because he found out like they were gambling at the at the uh, All Star game you know because he's a, he's a big, he's a big <laughs> oh, gambler yeah. so but uh th- yeah there was a video of him on the court like dapping up like Steph Curry or no it was Luca and then like Cat comes over and like. Jordan like more or less like had no idea who he was. Like, That's at all. So you and Jordan not for, are the same. Not way. for Carl, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, poor Carl. Um yeah, but listen, we might be stuck just watching basketball because we oh, still gosh. do not have baseball back. And what I do you think, think it's going to take? I mean, because they have they've kept, I mean the MLB met them on the universal DH thing. They agreed on that. Um I, obviously the hold up is the money thing. Yeah. There's no way we start on time, right? Because then, I mean, even the commissioner, who I think needs to go immediately, but Manfred, but he said, you know, there's basically they need, what is it, six weeks to prep? Yeah. Yeah. So we're not starting on time right now as it is. Yeah. So the latest today, so that the only thing that the MLB brought brought to the table today was to add 10,000 to the minimum salary per year for players. And it also withdrew its proposal for an alternate system, um, alternate minimum system that is tiered based on service time. So yeah, there's still a lot going on. Um, I think we kind that, of that service this, time, but... the service time rules is, is probably a huge fight. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. I, 
I'm just going to sit in the back and, and hope we, we see it sooner rather than later. But I feel um, like it's 2020 all over again. If there's no baseball, what are we going to do in the summer? I don't know. I watched NASCAR when... Uh, oh, we got Formula One coming up. We do. Seventh. Yeah, we do have F1 coming back. So that's, yeah, that should dive, be pretty cool. Dive into um, that. Yeah, actually, the uh, the new season of um, Drive to Survive starts in, I think, three weeks. I think I want to say it's the 14th. Um, Shout out Netflix. Have you watched any of it? I watched the first couple episodes of the first season, and, and it's it's pretty good. Oh, dude, season three for for last season is so good. Um, yeah, I got I gotta just, catch up on it. Yeah, it's just great to see like how much like Red Bull absolutely despises Mercedes, like because they're just so good. Right. Um, it's yeah, yeah. I won't I won't spoil it, but it's it's pretty good. Um, yeah. So. Uh, Let's see what we got here. Um, there was a couple of big sales this week. I kind of spo- I kind of spoiled the big one. <laughs> that's um, okay. So that's on me. Um, but yeah, I guess in the, in the the area of baseball, uh, since we're, since we're talking about it, there was a gold uh, trout uh, Bowman Chrome Auto uh, PSA ten for for a little over half a mil. Um, I don't know what the what do you know what the pop is on that that kind of card. I mean, it's numbered out of fifty. I would assume probably less than three. Yeah, I would, I would think anywhere. I would think less than ten or so. Yeah, um, I mean, it, yeah, it's a huge card. To yeah. be honest with you, I mean, out of the super. Oh no, that yeah, no, the super did. What three nine three point nine million right? I think it was like four three. I thought it was four point three. You might be right though. I think three three point nine actually kind of sounds more accurate. I mean, that half a million for. There's only they, they had red back then. I think that's is that it. They didn't have out of tens back then. Yeah, I mean this is the third variation back from the super. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's kind of accurate. Um, not bad. Yeah, not bad. Um, this one was pretty. I guess I don't know. I I was down. I was down on this guy last year, just because I didn't think he could hold up. Um, you know, playing pitcher and mm-hmm. and as you know as a hitter. Uh, but a, an Otani orange um, Bowman Chrome, which is the pitching. Is that the one of him pitching, or is that the one of him hitting? I don't know. I was going to ask you. Remember the story from a couple months back? From the there was a guy, and correct me if I'm wrong. I could be flip flopping these, but there was a guy that pulled a base redemption for an Otani auto out of 2018 Bowman Chrome. He redeemed it, and the top sent him an orange and yes yeah, so that's accurate um and then the guy that that pulled an orange auto ended up getting what did he get like 38 dollars worth of tops crap yeah it was terrible and, it was and terrible. so i'm wondering if this is the card well i did see that guy actually did end up getting the orange auto oh they, did he yeah he did end up getting it um, so i'm sure this is one of those two that, it, yeah that a... yeah it might be um i mean one hundred fifty thousand. I mean, Otani had an amazing season last year. Yeah. Do you think, I mean, you think he does it again? No. Yeah. I would rather invest in like, in like Vlad. Yeah. Um, I would, I would put money in Vlad, Juan Soto. I mean, yeah, I, I, Otani and he may prove us wrong, but it's so hard to keep up production as a pitcher and a, and a hitter. I, I just think as he tails off, you know, deeper in his career and stuff like that, they're going to move him out of pitching. I would, I would have to assume. Yeah. Cause the longevity of a pitcher is, I mean, what's the average lifespan of a pitcher in the MLB? I mean, it's gotta be, less I mean, they than have five to, years. they have to adapt to like, you have to severely adapt as you get older and lose velocity and stuff. So I don't know. Right. I mean, for 40,000 less, you could have gotten a Tatis gold, um, first Bowman yep. auto. That seems like a better buy to me. I would have taken that. Yeah, that's. I can't believe that's that much money. <laughs> I mean, how many games has he played? Like a season and a half. Tatis. Yeah. I mean, he got hurt his rookie year. Uh, twenty twenty was a shortened season. Last season was his first full season, and he was hurt a good chunk of that year too. I don't. He hasn't played yeah. a full season yet. He's so good, but oh my god, him and Acuna just scare the hell out of me. But yeah. I mean, I guess people have money to. to Juan uh, Soto. Yeah, I don't. I don't see how the. I don't see how the gap's not bigger between those guys. But 
Uh, uh, what do I know, right? Um, uh, That's why we're not spending 200k <laughs> on cards. Yeah, true. Um, another Kobe. So I didn't spoil both Kobe's, um, mm-hmm. but another Kobe, an exquisite um, limited logos. Uh, Kobe Bryant patch auto out of seventy five did three hundred sixty thousand. Seen a little bit of an. Wow. I feel like we've seen a little bit more of an uptick in interest in his stuff. Um, of well, recent. we got the. We got the. Is, there's a Laker documentary coming out this summer, oh, kind yeah, of similar yeah. to the Michael Jordan uh, uh, Last Dance. So I would expect to see Kobe cards on the rise for the next few months. Yep, these ones are definitely out of my range, but yep, um, barely. But. <laughs> uh, <laughs> another precious, uh, a precious metal gem, uh, ninety-seven metal universe. Uh, Jordan out of fifty BGS nine did to the nice little three hundred twenty-four thousand. Um, not auto. Non auto, yep. Um, little hockey, uh, the cup, which is like the flawless of of hockey, the the best product you can get. Um, uh, McDavid RPA and a ninety seven, which is his jersey number. Uh, yeah, PSA did one hundred forty four thousand. Kind of seems Ooh. like a uh, honestly like a decent price. Like I don't know how much. Like do you watch a lot of hockey or no? Uh, I used to when the Blackhawks were good. <laughs> yeah, um, okay, fair. Not as much anymore, but I know that set the record for any McDavid card. Yeah, I don't. I don't watch a ton of it. I love going to games. Like I absolutely yeah, love games going to games. Fun. Like my but my buddy in college, his brother was like the in stadium announcer for the Devils, so he would. Oh, cool. Yeah, he would always get tickets, and we would we would go all the time. Um, yeah, live hockey is the best. Like it's yeah, not the Chicago it's not Blackhawks hot. game. Like you're not gonna sweat at the game, right? like which is which is sick um <laughs> and uh yeah you always got a chance of a fight happening so that's that's always pretty cool but yeah chicago, we, chicago blackhawks is a good time you just gotta you know get a couple friends just stuff your uh sweatshirts full of kevlar going down to the west side of chicago <laughs> and go to a game yeah yeah something light uh but he he's mcdavid's disgusting like his yeah, highlights really. are, are just awesome to see um and then we will we'll close out with a babe ruth um blank back sgc 5.5 5 for six hundred thousand. from 1916 how many of those do you think exist not a lot i would think like there might be like 10 graded that high yeah. Yeah. this yeah. is oh, considered none, high, none higher it's one of Ooh. two sgc 5.5 5. so yep that's considered babe Ruth's rookie so what a boring card on the back just blank yeah blank back <laughs> <laughs> they just called it blank back so they could act like it was a short yeah. print or something. Oh man. It's off center as hell too. I can't buy that. I wouldn't buy that. Um Yeah, me either. But mainly because I don't have the six hundred and twelve K, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, like me, <laughs> for me, like mostly just like the off like the centering. I was right there. I was I almost <laughs> bought it, but I'm like, yeah, better not. Yeah. Um Yeah, so some pretty massive polls this week. Um Yeah. A green lamella one on one out of Don Russell Elite. H- have you watched it? Yet? Like that product opening? It's actually yeah. pretty good. Like I kind of like I, the cards for like what, like three hundred bucks. Hear, yeah, you hear Don Russell, you think kind of lower end, but Don Russell Elite really is is not bad product. Yeah, they're they're pretty they're pretty nice for the price point. Um, not a bad buy if you're if you're looking to rip basketball. I think honestly much better than like because uh, you have the pen pal autos in there, mm-hmm. um, which are on card. Yeah. And you don't get really get a chance for on card autos in basketball products that cheap, um, right? So great product to rip. And then we saw two one hundred one Wanders pulled. So there was the monster, yeah, the eighty seven Super Fractor, which was non auto. Mm-hmm. Um, I was pulled by Overtime Cards, and then someone on Facebook pulled the Platinum one hundred one Baseball Stars auto. Um, Con- I mean, so it's an insert auto, but I mean, it's it's still a one on one. Like, yeah, enjoy your boat. Uh, yeah, what do you think <laughs> that? House. What do you think that pulls in? Six figures. I I think the eight. To be honest with you, I think the eighty seven Super Fractor does more than the auto. Um, really? I think I don't know. Yeah, I I don't know if it does six. The Super Fractor, I would think, probably goes for close to sixty to seventy, and the. I don't know the the baseball stars. I don't. I don't know. What do you think? You th- you think it could possibly hit six figures? Maybe. I think it. could. I wouldn't put it past it. It's it's Wander yeah. Mania. I mean, I've, it's about as hot as the hobby's ever been for a single guy. I'm gonna imagine that this these hit auction pretty quick unless these guys are really 
really in on on Wander. I know the guy that pulled the auto said he was going to hold it, not for sale, not for trade. But uh, you dangle money in front of someone's yeah, face, you, and like you know, moods change pretty damn quick. So put fifty to hundred k in front of yeah. him, selling that thing. No yeah, doubt. Who the hell knows? But yeah. Um. So th- this upcoming week, uh, we kind of touched a little bit earlier. So I, I think some more mosaic football we should see dropping. Mm-hmm. Um, hopefully some megas hangers maybe yeah something something light um maybe some more formula one blasters uh i still haven't gotten any of my boxes in from tops i know the uk boxes have been hitting um which is kind of weird to see and the the u.s stuff it just has not shipped yet so right yeah, yeah. maybe we'll see some more retail there um nice. yeah so we should have f1 chrome soon and then a uefa first edition i mean I think we're just getting first edition everything. I'm surprised we can get first edition F1. Um, honestly, I just I picture tops printing like they're, they're where the warehouse down in Texas where I just see the phone ringing and, and it just being like a like a busy mail room at a at a high end company just ever yeah. scramble just print everything. I feel like they have to have like a weekly meeting called like first edition, and like yeah. they just get in there and they're like, mm, let's see what could we put that stamp on this time, like. We're gonna get like first edition everything garbage. Packages. Yeah, they're ta- they're taking first off the line approach. Honestly, I kind of wish they put it on Chrome cards, like instead of paper. I agree. I, I agree. I bet you it's just their their machine that they used to stamp. Like can't do Chrome. And Either that, or they're <laughs> they don't saving do some co- pinching coin and saving some cash and just printing it. On yeah, paper. probably. Um, but yeah, man. Anything else uh, from you this week? No, I mean I think I think that's about it. Um, yeah, again, quiet week during the with the retail drops and stuff, but a lot of stuff going on in the hobby, a lot of stuff going on in the sports world. Oh, real quick, you know what's funny? I wanted to bring up. Did you see the? Uh, you watch any college basketball ever? Yeah, I mean more so around the tournament, but if it's like uh, the only thing on, I'll watch it. Juwan Howard, who is a former oh, player, he yeah. coaches uh, Michigan. Did you see him slap the Wisconsin Dude, guy in the head? Insane! Like what? Are, yeah. like, two different dudes. Just and then oh, just get, he just got absolutely smacked in the face, but I can't believe that he's not going to get dumped by Michigan. But yeah, they got suspended for five games, and the coach he slapped got suspended for a game, which is I, I don't know. I why mean, I feel like they probably had to just like it's like the Michigan fans just like shut up because they're like kind of the worst. But um, no bias here at all. Um, but yeah, I think that'll do it. Um, again, if you guys want to connect with us. Um, Hit us up on the GFNF Twitter at GFNF underscore underscore. And you guys can um, hop on the wait list um, to get into the Discord at uh, GFNF. Yeah, GFNF.io slash wait list. Um, so you should just be able to hop on there, put your information in. And, uh, you know, we, we pick people pretty often from there. So, um, but yeah, if you want to connect with me personally at NAFUBOY13 on Twitter. And uh, Jake, where can, where can they hit you up? Uh, at Wrigley Elite SC. Awesome. Great. Yeah, we'll uh we'll be back next week and and hopefully have a little bit more uh a little more action in the in the hobby world. It was a little slow week, but uh yeah, we'll we'll catch you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Peace.